השם, it's the נר שמיני של חנוכה, eight candle of חנוכה, זאת חנוכה. The Saba Kadisha from Ujin said that in, in this day of uh, eight candle of Hanukkah, what that a simple person can achieve is equal to what that um, the biggest righteous people can achieve in Rosh Hashanah night and in Yom Kippur's night. Right? In, such holy nights they can achieve wonders and every person in this night can achieve the same wonders miracles that will happen to him in his life so how can it be why why especially in this day eight candle of Hanukkah such a unique and special day that is uh, allowing every one of us to enjoy such wonders because the main issue of Hanukkah is to bring down the light to the lowest levels to the darkest places of them all and it's written that wealthy people they got a harder test than poor people why because a poor person, when he receives something, money, he knows that it's a miracle. Because he's unemployed, he doesn't have no job, no income, and if he's hungry and someone comes and gives him $20, so, wow, thank you, you saved my life. He, 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 very fast he realized that, that the Creator is helping him. Because he's empty, because he doesn't have. But a wealthy person, a rich person, that got businesses and money, and, and money is flowing to his account, and every time he needs money, just he, he takes out from the bank. Now, for him to remember that the money that he got came from the Creator, it's a harder challenge, because he remembered the days that he was working, um, seeding and harvesting. He remembered exactly the deals that he signed, and he knows exactly how the money came. And, and, and it's because of, of his wisdom and because of the time that he invested. So he saw himself working and creating, so to speak, that money. So for him, it's a harder test to say, Hashem gave me that money. So when the light of the menorah, of the Chanukiah, is shining to the lowest places of them all, so it's shining to the darkest places. It's shining to those poor people that when the light is shining upon them, for them it's, it's obvious that it's a miracle of Hashem. So Zot Hanukkah, the last day of Hanukkah, is a day that holds in, inside of it the power of revealing the hidden miracles of the Creator to everyone. Even to those ones that left behind, even to those ones that fell off the, the way and does not keep to our mitzvot, even to those ones that lost their faith, even to those ones that have no clue how to climb back. But when the light is shining upon them, so it's a clear evidence for them that it was the hand of Hashem that redeemed them, that saved them, that rescued them, that that the mercy, the kindness of the Creator been revealed on them. So, in that day, the last day of Hanukkah, it's a day that every person, every one of us, can understand completely, because of, of our poverty, because of our humility, because of the huge distance between us to the Creator, how close the Creator is to us from His side. We're far from Him, from our side. Who am I to climb to Hashem? Can I climb spiritual ladder? Can I go up to heaven? How can I do that? I don't know. I, I need to GPS the address to my house. I don't know the way from here to my house. I need to GPS. I need to, my, my, to use the ways and whatever. So you, simple things you cannot do. So spiritual things to climb to seven skies, seven levels of heaven, 
and to know the combinations of the letters and to know exactly how to answer every angel and angel like that it's written in Sefer Heichalot in the Midrash. It's an amazing Midrash that explains how a person can climb to, to see Hashem. Every world that he's reaching, in that world there are angels that are made out of fire, that are riding on, on, on flaming horses, that, that got smoke and thunder is coming out of their <coughs> nostrils, and, and, and eyes are lightnings, and, and, and <laughs> you die just from thinking of, 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 of and, and all of those angels are coming and, and shooting F uh, flaming arrows of, of, of fires and thunders and uh, it, it's terrifying and and now you need to stand those guards are asking you who are you and you need to remember your name and to answer and then they're asking you what's the name of the angel that's in charge in this world and that world and now you need to answer the names of angels that's in first letters or middle letters of combinations from different verses and you need to answer and you need to remember where you are and who are you talking with and what are you answering, when you answer, okay, you pass the first gate, now you're, you, can, you can visualize, you can see Hashem in that level and then you climb to the next world and you have seven. The Midrash is saying that there was that righteous man, Nechuniah ben Hakana, Nechuniah ben Hakana, that's that righteous man that wrote for us the prayer of Anna Bekoach, Anna Bekoach Gdulati Minecha Tatir Tzorah, it's the name of the Creator. That prayer holds inside of it a combination of letters that holds the whole, one of the holy name, holiest names of the Creator Himself. And He composed it in a way that for us it's going to be a prayer, it's going to be a song that we can sing. But really it holds the real holy name of the Creator. So that righteous man, Nechuniah ben Hakana, he was... Um, in the days of Beit HaMikdash, he was standing inside the Azara, inside of Beit HaMikdash, in the Temple of Hashem. And all of the righteous people of that generation would come to listen Torah from him. He was standing and closing his eyes, and, and he was seeing in, in a vision, in, in a clear sight, he would see the, 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 the worlds, and he would describe what that he saw, and there were two um, people that were um, appointed on, on writing, authors that would write the descriptions, what that, he, what that he saw, they were writing on a book, on a paper, and all the righteous people would sit on the ground, and we're talking about Rabbi Akiva, and Yonatan ben Uziel, and Rabban Gamliel Anasi, the Prince of Israel, Rabban Gamliel, he was sitting on the ground, and Rabbi Shmael Kohen Gadol, the high priest, everyone was sitting on the ground, listening to the words that came out of the mouth of Rabbi Nechunia ben Akana. And, uh, and Nechunia ben Akana, he was climbing the worlds, one world after the other, and he would answer the names of the, the holy angels that were appointed to guard the, the entrance to, to, to the king of all kings, to the creator, that no one that is not worthy <coughs> will enter. And he passed one gate after the other, he's climbing and climbing, and when he um, answered the right answers in the sixth level, in the sixth heaven, so he was climbing to the seventh one, and then he didn't spoke anymore. He was standing still, and quiet, and the righteous people are waiting, what's going to be? Nechunia ben Akana, he's supposed to tell us, and they're waiting and waiting and waiting, and he is somewhere else, meditating, seeing things, and not talking, and they try to call him, Rabbi, please, Rabbi, and touching him, moving him, nothing. That angel went somewhere else, and he's not responding to no call. And uh, the righteous people, his students, they didn't know what to do. So start whispering, talking, what are we going to do? Maybe something happened to him. Maybe we've been punished. Yeah, uh, assumptions, talking, trying to, to figure out what to do. And then they uh, sent Rabban Gamliel, the prince, the Nasi Israel. He sent the, um, um, a messenger to Rabbi Ishmael, 
um, to Rabbi Ishmael, that Rabbi Ishmael was the main student of Rabbi Nechunia ben Akana. He was his right hand. He was always by his side. And he asked him, Rabban Gamliel asked Rabbi Ishmael, um, you, he told him, you are a son of righteous people from a very worthy, important <coughs> legacy, a holy child of holy people. You will be uh, the one to, to, to answer to us in our situation. What should we do? Maybe from heaven they were angry at us that we let Yonatan ben Uziel to sit on the ground. Maybe we didn't respect it. Yonatan ben Uziel, that righteous man, the Tana Yonatan ben Uziel from Amuka that is buried in Amuka close to Tzfat. Maybe we didn't respect him enough and that's why Hashem is angry. Give us a solution. Why, why, why Nechunia ben Akana is not responding, he's not talking to us anymore. So Rabbi Ishmael told him, listen, I'll give you a solution. And there is a long story over there how they took, um, 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 uh, um, uh, how you say, Gargir Afuna. How you say that? Peas. One, one green, green pea. pea. He took that and, and he let a certain woman to, to, to touch it. It's a woman that went to the mikveh. And after she went out from the mikveh, nine holy righteous rabbis will say that her dipping in the mikveh was kosher. But one will have a doubt. So for sure that she is kosher. If she went in that way to the mikveh, that nine poskim, one big rabbis will say it's kosher, it's kosher. But there is a doubt, that slight doubt of one <laughs> rabbi that will say, listen, maybe it was not kosher. So that woman will ch touch that, that green pea and just going to roll it like that with her finger. And then pour perfume that calls Afar Semon, it's a, a very powerful and holy perfume that was existing in the days of, of the temple, of Beit HaMikdash, we don't have that smell today. And it means like they purify that, that grain and they, it's, it's a whole, everything is holy, everything is pure with it. Just that doubt of, of one opinion that <laughs> puts some kind of shade on, on that tvila of that woman and bring that fabric in, inside of a fabric, silk fabric, and bring it and, we'll, and, 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 and it's going to be the solution. And they brought it and when he just, they just took that piece of fabric, that, that green pea ch touched it with the Afosamon perfume and it just touched, they touched Rabbi Nechunia ben Akana on his cloaks on his outfit, immediately he woke up and he started talking. And they asked him, what happened? He said, because of that slightest doubt of my purity, they kicked me out from standing in front of the throne of honor. So think about his level, the level of his purity while standing over there a few minutes earlier glued it completely to that holy site, uh, seeing the Creator Himself sitting on His throne of honor. So then they asked Him, okay, what you saw? So He said, listen, stop, uh, stop asking questions and uh, investigating. Maybe we didn't respect it, uh, Yonatan ben Uziel, maybe we did something wrong. You just want to hear the combinations. That's the truth. You just you you wanted me to tell you the names, right? <laughs> you you want to you want to break the code. You want to hear the holy names to use while you're meditating. So Nechunia uh, ben Akana gave them the names. By the way, it's all written in the book that calls Sefer Heichalot. There is an amazing midrash that calls Sefer Heichalot, and in that midrash also the names are written over there. <coughs> We're not allowed to use them. We don't know the, the, the power of those holy names, but it's all written over there in that Midrash. So, Nechunia ben Akana and those righteous people that have those amazing abilities to reveal, to uncover the light of the Creator, they, in that, in that day of, of Zod Hanukkah, 
we're receiving that light, we're receiving an opportunity to attach ourselves to those places even though that we are in the lowest places of the mall. And only because that the light is shining from His side, from the side of the Creator. In that day, because that we're so low, because that the darkness is so thick, because that the nights are so long, because that it's winter time, and because that it's so cold and dark and whatever, and judgments and people feel those, those, those feelings in those days, and the nights are long, you are standing in such a humble place that when you experience holiness, purity, kdusha, any connection to the Creator, immediately you realize that it came to you because of the unconditional love of the Creator. You will not going to fail in that test to think that it might have happened because of your greatness, because of your wisdom. Because that I'm strong and powerful and wise, that's why I'm rich, that's why I'm wealthy, that's why I'm healthy, that's why I'm strong. No. In those days of Hanukkah, in the days of the winter, in the longest nights of them all, in the deepest darkness, in the darkest hours, in those hours when suddenly you see a, a spark of light, a beam of light, you realize very fast that it's only a gift from the loving Creator, a grace, a gift of, 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 of a generous gift of the Creator to His beloved children from His side to us. That's why in those, in those days, in, the, in this special night and in those golden nights, how they're being called, even a simple person can achieve such amazing levels like that will be equal to the levels that are that, that are being achieved by those righteous people in the holy days of the first day of the year and in Yom Kippur, only because of the humility that we feel. So now, from all of that explanation, every person can take something for himself. When you're being humbled, when Hashem is taking you seriously and helps you to understand how weak you are, how zero you are, how nothing you are, how only His mercy can save you and can redeem you. It's a gift. It's not a punishment. Because in that humble place, now you have the vessel to contain the bounty of the wisdom of truth. Now in that time when you're humble, when you realize that every good thing that you have in your life is a gift, a free gift from heaven, Mimidbar Matana, from the desert you received it as a free gift, then you have the vessel to receive the Torah. You will know what to do with the gifts that you will receive. When a person is arrogant, when a person is, 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 is vain, he cannot handle purity. He cannot handle faith. Even if he is learning verses, those verses are confusing him. Those verses bring arrogance into his heart and twisting him. And when he's coming back home, like we explained last week in the class, he's coming back home after sitting for hours in the Beit Midrash and learning, and then what he's doing with all of his knowledge? Arguing with his wife and fighting with her and rebuking her. How come she didn't do that? And why she didn't thought about that? And why she didn't prepare the candles? And why he needs to come and things are not ready? And why the, there's no sufganiyot? And what's going on? And where is my slippers? That's not the path. That's not the right way. When a person is selfish and self-centered, he will never have the merit, will never have the privilege to enjoy the wisdom of truth, even if he will sit and learn for 20 hours every day, even if he will own a Beit Midrash, even if he will be the chief rabbi of his community, if he is self-centered, if he's selfish, if he wants to receive pleasure and honor and respect from his followers, from his people, from his friends, from his family, from his students, he will never experience real spirituality. Maybe he will think that he's spiritual. Maybe he will feel that he's spiritual. Maybe he will lie and pretend to himself, maybe, or to his people that he is spiritual. But he will never really gonna experience spiritual experiences. Because those are coming only to those ones that are completely humble. 
completely humble are those ones that are able to respect everyone else, to appreciate the good points in other people, that they judge everyone favorably, that they don't criticize other people, that they're not executing and killing and destroying people because that their faith is a little bit different, because that their understanding is contradicting your, your assumptions. He is not fighting against other people. He just holds the truth, and the truth is the truth of the Creator. And how you can hear the truth of the Creator? Who is that wise person that will have that wisdom to receive the complete knowledge? The Talmud, the Mishnah is telling us, Ezeu Chacham, who is the wise person? Alomed Mikol Adam, the one that is ready to learn from every other person. From everyone you can learn, from an animal you can learn, from the behavior of, of animals in nature you can learn. It's written, ta'amin. If you see wisdom between the nations, you see people acting wisely, you should believe, you should learn from them. There is much to learn from the nations. There is much to learn from people, from the way that they build their courts, from the way that they build their hospitals, from the way that they build their school systems, <coughs> from the way that they establish their laws, I, I don't know, from the way that they're writing books and composing music. and There is much to learn from people. If people invested thousands of hours into certain projects, why that you going to erase it in a moment? No, he is not a Jew. No, he is not from my, uh, from my group. He is not from my community. You're just rejecting the wisdom. You're just refusing to learn from every person. But the Creator is so great and so big that He's dressing Himself and covering Himself in endless number of, of coverings. And His face are shining to us from four wings of the universe. You can see the Spirit. You can hear the voice of Hashem Barach whispering from the, 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 the leaves of the trees, in the wind, in the rivers, in the stream, in the waves, between the, in the, with the animals. And the, all the creation is praising the Creator, is crea praising the, 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 the Father of, in heaven. And you, if you will just listen, if you will just try to learn, Open your heart, open your mind, open your eyes, open your ears to listen to that harmony, to the voice, to the music of the creation. You will realize it's not noise at all. There is no noise. There are no contradictions. There are no arguments. Everyone are just completing the creation together. You think, oh, it's my enemy, only because you're fighting with him. If you're going to make one step back, Make one step back. Just listen. Listen to the supervision, to the hand of the Almighty, to the um, private supervision of the Creator on your life. You're going to see that there are no enemies at all. Only signs that are telling you, no, don't go to that direction. Go to that direction. No, that place is dangerous for you. Don't go there. Try to go in that path. No, don't talk to that person. He can damage you. Go speak with that one. And the Creator is guiding you. And it's only signs. It's only hints of the, of, 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 of the Merciful Father that is helping you to straight up your, your path. To bring yourself to, 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 to your place. To become yourself. That you will experience who that you really are. For an example, a few days ago I wanted to clean something in the house. Some crumbs fell somewhere in the, in, in the, in the, in the kitchen, in the living room. And I wanted to clean that. And I sat on, on one of the chairs and I had my, my, my napkin that I wanted to clean it with. But I, my, my mind been distracted to do something else. My, one of my kids spoke with me. I, I, I did something else. And suddenly I dropped off my napkin. And when I bent to lift it, suddenly I saw those crumbs again. And then I cleaned it. And then I said to myself, look, look what Hashem did with you. You wanted to clean that. No one asked you. It was your goodwill. But you wanted to clean, to, to pick those crumbs and to throw them. Great, wonderful thing you wanted to do. But then you forgot about it. But Hashem Itbarach, He never forgot about it. 
He wanted to help you to complete your will. So what he did? He helped you to drop off that napkin that's going to remind you that you took it for a reason to clean those crumbs. But if you wouldn't make me drop off my napkin, I would never bend and I would not remember to clean those crumbs. So when that napkin fell from my hand, it was, it was, it was bothering me. It was, no, now I need to bend. A certain thought came to my mind that was not satisfied from that. Okay, now I need to, to do something that I'm not willing to do. It's okay. Oh, the napkin, it fell. I wasn't satisfied from that. But it brought me to complete my own will, to achieve my own goal that I wanted in the first place to clean, to take those crumbs and to throw them to the garbage. But Hashem did it for me. But the more important thing, even from the fact that the Creator helped me to complete and to accomplish my will and to clean that thing, was that He helped me to remember in His existence. Because if... I would not forget about those crumbs. And if my mind would not be distracted, and if I would not drop that napkin, and if all of that story wouldn't take place in my life, I would think that I cleaned it. I would be so happy and satisfied. Yes, I'm also, I'm helping in the house, I'm cleaning, I did this, I did that. And I would drown in my own imagination like I have certain existence. But I don't. Only Hashem Itbarach is reviving and healing and supporting and holding the creation to work and to function. And He is the spirit behind the trees and He is the spirit behind the wind and He is the spirit behind the creeks and the lakes and the rivers and the springs and the big sea and people. And He is the spirit inside the mouths of people and the opinions of people and the, 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 the arguments that people are having and running and the wars and everything. And if you will just open your heart and listen to the voice of Hashem. Hashem, what are you saying? Hashem, what are you talking? Hashem, what is your speech? What is your message? What do you want from me? Not what I can accomplish. Not what I can achieve. Not what I want to achieve from this creation that you made. What do you want me to do? What is my mission from your side? What is your desire? What do you want me to accomplish? How can I satisfy you? What can I do to help you, Father in Heaven? What can I do to reveal the light that you treasured inside of me? Because inside of you there is a spark of the Shekhinah Kedosha. The Creator Himself lives inside of you. Inside of my nation, I live. Make that temple and I'm going to live inside of you. And we made the temple. We built the Mishkan and then we built the first house and we built the second one. We did it already. Now Hashem is with us. And we just need to go with that. When we're talking about redemption, when we're talking about faith in the Creator, we must put an end to our heretic, kfirot, that's how you say that? Heresy. Her heresy. Heresy? Great. We need to put an end to it. Why? Because we can be religious, we can keep the rules of, of the Bible, so, so we can think that we are, we can wake up early in the morning and to run to synagogues. We can put filin. We can think that we're keeping Shabbat. We can think that we're eating kosher. We can do many things that will look like we are observant, that we're keeping the rules uh, of, of, of the Torah Kedosha. But actually the main thing will still be missing from the book. We will lack of, of faith. We will lack of an inner connection to the Creator. Why? Because we will still be trapped under the rules of nature. <coughs> you can keep Shabbat, you can eat kosher, you can learn Torah, you can go to learn in yeshiva, your, your children can, can go and learn Torah and whatever, and you still don't have faith that the Creator is really above nature. 
And the evidence for that is that when someone will tell you that he gonna uh, uh, that he gonna take you to court, so you immediately gonna call your lawyer instead of calling Hashem. And if someone will will give you like something in life will show you that you're sick or ill or something, immediately you gonna have an appointment to meet your doctor or some other professional. A therapist or someone that is able to to help you with those and instead of calling Hashem that he is that he's the one that can heal every flesh and to make wonders that he's Israel that he's the one that heals his people and and can and can help you and redeem you from every judgment the proof for the fact that you lack of faith in the creator means that the creator is above his creation that the Creator is above nature, is the fact that you're trapped in nature. That when you're stuck without money, you're thinking how to invest more hours, how to make another business, how to close another deal, how to make another phone call, how to call your father-in-law again, even that you spoke with him already last week about making money, him sending you money, and, and on and on and on. Thank God my father-in-law doesn't have a penny. So, I don't have that yet. So, uh, but... Normal people like you, they, you have who to call. You, you, you can call the Ghostbusters, right? Who are you going to call? So, re regular people, they have many, many evidence, many, many proofs for the fact uh, that nature exists. And they will play all of the time like, uh, like mice in, in the trap, in the maze, a certain game, but it will always be stuck inside of that box, inside of that maze. They will never gonna take themselves out to understand that there is a world of freedom, world of faith, world of emunah. And in that aspect, when you have faith in the Creator, now when we're talking about the real redemption, we need to understand that we need to stop living our life inside that maze of physicality under the rules of nature when you really want to be redeemed you must redeem yourself from the rules of nature you must understand the, that the rules of nature don't necessarily have to force you under them under the will of the Creator you can be like Elijah the prophet like Eliyahu and Avi and to ride to heaven on on horses that made out of flaming fire. You can be like Nechunia ben Hakana that Hashem Yitbarach made wonders with him. That you can be like the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, you can be like Rabbi Nachman of Westlam, like Baal Atanya, like many other righteous people that Hashem made wonders with them. Hashem can open the sea for you, not only for Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem opened the Jordan River for all of Am Israel. Hashem opened the river for Elijah the prophet, for Elisha Navi, for, for, for many people. The Baal Shem Tov was sitting on, on, a, on a rag, on a carpet, and was, was hovering above the water. The, 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 the Baba Sali and all of his ancestors, Shmuel, Abu Chatzera, Rav Shmuel Abu Chatzera was sitting on a carpet and flying uh, above the water. They had that power. So now, oh no, that's the Baba Sali. Oh no, that's the Baal Shem Tov. If you're going to make a list, you're going to realize that it's too much, a too long list to say, oh no, it's only them. The list is too long. Also him and also him and also him and also him to wake you up in every generation that those miracles can take place also in your life. And I'm telling you that also from my life experience. I never sat on the carpet and float, float, float above the water. But other miracles happened in my life. Many, many miracles took place in my life. Things that you wouldn't believe took place in my life. Things that came out of the blue, situations that were impossible to, to, to win, and Hashem Yitbarach just really opened those gates of heaven to me, to show me His existence, that His hand can change nature, that nature is obligating certain reality, and prayer is above nature, and your prayer can change the nature. 
you're stuck. Oh, I can't have children. Oh, I know. But it's written, Hashem Pakad Etzara. Hashem gave children to Avraham when Avraham was not possible of having children, when Sarah was not possible of having children. But Hashem wanted them to have children, so Hashem made it happen. And Hashem Itbach, when he wanted Moshe Rabbeinu Moses to hit the stone, to speak to the stone, and that water will come out of the stone, of that boulder, it's exactly what had happened. And when he wanted the well that was full with holy, pure water, the, the, the well of, of Miriam, to walk with our nation in the desert, walking well, walking with the camp in the desert, that's exactly what had happened. And when he wanted the Red Sea to open for us, we were walking on dry land. And when he wanted many miracles and wonders to happen, exactly those things took place in normal people's life. There was a poor person in the generation of, 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 of the Orachayim HaKadosh. We're talking about 250 years ago, so, um, approximately. That's how you say that? I'm learning. Slowly, but surely. And the, the, the Orachayim HaKadosh saw that poor person crying and crying and crying. And he asked him, why are you crying? He said, I was working um, um, in, in another land, in a foreign land, uh, uh, um, behind the sea, after the sea, in a different land. Uh, and and I, I, I saved a lot of money. And when I came back, I'm, I'm, with all of my treasures, with all of my savings, I was walking on the bridge from the boat to the, to the port, and all of my all of the money, the box with all of my, my money, my wallet, fell down to the water and, and drowned in the sea. Like I'm dead. I lost all of my savings. One year, two years I was abroad and, and now I came back and I, I don't know what to do. So the Orachayim HaKadosh told him, I will make a miracle for you if you're going to promise to take only what that belongs to you. And he said, I promise. And the Orachayim HaKadosh forced the angel that is in charge on the sea to lift all the things that drowned for generations, for thousands of years. And treasures came up and diamonds and golden rings and, and treasures of all the pirates that, that went in, in that pier. And he recognized and that poor person recognized his wallet and he said, that's mine. So the Orachayim HaKadosh told him, go and take it. And he went and he took it. So now you're going to say, oh, if it's drowned, you need to jump after it. If you don't, you're don't, you not a scuba diver, you don't know how to go to the depths, you lost your money, that's it. No. Gravitation doesn't have no existence when the Creator decides to break those rules. But you think that it drowned. No. It depends on your faith. It depends on how you believe in the Creator, that the Creator for you, who is He? Is He someone that is not available, someone that is in heaven, someone that disappeared, someone that is untouchable? No. The Creator lives inside of you. And when you get that message, you can make wonders in the world. And that's the redemption. On that we're talking while we're talking about miracles, when we're talking about days of Hanukkah, Ala nisim ala niflaot, on the wonders, on the wonders that took place in the life of our ancestors, but the same miracles can happen to us in this time, in those days, in this Hanukkah, now, tonight, and if not tonight, so tomorrow, and if not tomorrow, so in the next day, in the next month. We need to work on our faith to uplift it. To set ourselves free. Like the verse is saying on the days of redemption, I'm going to set you free. You will all be free. Free. Free from your own prison. That you're a prisoner of your own thoughts. Always afraid, always terrified, always worried, always upset, always stressed, always don't know, always lost, always confused, terrified. Why? Only because you're not going into the depths of your own soul. <coughs> you're not checking really who you are. Now, I just, uh, before we're finishing, I wanted to clarify something. Um, um, a few months ago, maybe three months ago, I gave a speech and I was saying, 
I was talking in that speech about the faith of Mashiach, that Mashiach, he will have to have faith in himself. And I said, regular person, I'm coaching everyone or telling them, you need to believe in yourselves, you need to find your true self, you need to check who you are and to go for it. So one person wants to sing, so believe in yourself, you can sing and go and try and practice and sing. Someone else, you want to learn Torah, go learn Torah, do whatever, dedicate your life to the... Whatever, find yourself and, and go with it and, and be who that you are. So I said, how hard it is. Let's say today you're a doctor and you really feel you want to be a movie producer. So, okay, to make that change, it's a big, big mission, right? To go explain your parents what you're doing, go explain your wife what you're doing. It's a big, big, big operation now to, to start producing movies. So I said, okay, great. And if that's a big challenge for a person to change his life from, from his current situation to another one, to a different one, so think about Mashiach. That Mashiach needs to believe in himself, not that he can be a movie producer, a videographer, that he can be Mashiach, that he will bring the redemption to the world. Think about his challenge, because Mashiach is, is one of us, is someone that is walking between us, someone that is talking in our language, someone that works on himself, and one day he will understand, hey, what's going on? I'm, I'm Mashiach. And he will have to believe in himself that he's the real Mashiach. So now, something happened after I gave that speech, and we received emails, more than 20 people claimed to be Mashiach and sending messages to our website. So now, we're stuck with more than 20 Mashiach, potential Mashiach, at least people that hallucinating and thinking that they're Mashiach. So, unfortunately, I want to disappoint you all, guys. You're not Mashiach. And if you are, you cannot and you're not allowed to do anything with the fact that you're a Mashiach. And I'll tell you why. Because only when Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu and Avi, going to come and he will announce who Mashiach is, then we will all going to follow you. Okay? But we cannot follow you yet until Eliyahu Navi is going to come. And Eliyahu Navi, how are we going to know that he is Eliyahu Navi? That's another question. We need to know that that for sure is Eliyahu Navi. And when we are going to know that that is Eliyahu Navi, and he will tell that you will tell us you are Mashiach, great. Then we're your followers and we're going to follow you forever. And we're going to crown you, we're going to praise you, everything. You're going to bless us, you're going to heal us. It will be great. But until that day, Please keep on working and supporting your family and, 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 and donate on the yellow donate button to the Muna Project once in a while. And do your job in the world and educate your children and please be nice and polite and take a shower once in a while. It can do only good and, and uh, be normal, please. Okay, so after we clarify that point, um, there is nothing else uh, to be said. I can bless you that all of your prayers will be answered, that only wonders will take place in your life, that you will always be happy and pleased and satisfied. Amen. You and all of your beloved ones. Amen. Please help us, the Munaproject.com and Munaproject Inc. Help us online with your support, with your donations. Um, buy the books. Uh, you still have time to buy Hanukkah gifts if you forgot to do that. And um, from heaven, Bezat Hashem, they're going to bless you by your generosity and will answer all of your prayers and requests. Amen. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.